starting this video late in the evening and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing and here it is a table so I know what you're asking yourself right now why is he showing us a table because we're going to be taking that down yes you may have seen them in the background of my videos and wondering what I'm doing with them well Tomorrow, we're going to fly this guy off the ice, we hope. So my initial thought was to fly this one off the ice tomorrow because it has the wheels. You can see it's RP01 and that's my father's initials. This is a plane that my father built when we both got into the hobby, I'd say, I don't know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And it probably has not been run or flown in 10 years. So I am going to be safe and not take the chance that the batteries are going to fail on me. Now I did plug it in. I did test the batteries both in the, uh, both in the transmitter and in the receiver section. And the batteries passed the test. And uh, they passed the load test and they passed the range test. but. You know, there's some sentimental value to this plane, and I would hate to see it piled up on the ice. So before we fly this one, I think I'm going to purchase batteries and replace them. Okay, and I'm going to hand him the camera. <laughs> see how damn smart he is. I'm really going against my gut instinct, but it's not my plane. He doesn't care, it's not his plane. There's no wind, perfect conditions, and away we go. The pilot shaking in his boots. Well, he's getting better. He's getting better. It wasn't a good night after all that. <laughs> well, that was. Uh, that was it. So it's back in one piece. No garbage bagger. No. But uh, next time uh, you'll see uh, Rainy at the sticks. Bye bye. bye, -bye this one, on the other hand, has already suffered a crash and it was repaired I bought this used probably 13 years ago or so and flew it for a couple of summers it's a really nice flyer uh, I no longer have the wooden prop on it I just have that little plastic prop and that's a shame I don't have the wooden prop but we're gonna take it down and I'm gonna show it to you guys
you guys can actually get a concept of the size of these. They are large. This one is fairly big. This has, I uh, believe this is an OS 61. And it is a two-stroke engine. Now, it hasn't ran in an, probably two years. So we are going to take the wing off and check it out, plug it in, and get it ready for tomorrow. Oh yeah, did I mention I called it Jedi Zero One? So to take the wing off, we'll need a flat screwdriver. And there's our wing. So you can see the wingspan is over six feet. Just put this aside. We're just going to check out the inside. You guys want to see what it looks like inside? Let me show you. So it has all the same control surfaces as a regular full-size aircraft. We have the uh, elevators on the back. We have a rudder. On the wings, we have a left and a right aileron. And we have a throttle control. So these are the servos inside. And these servos actuate. And when they move back and forth, they move the control surfaces for us. Down below, there's a battery pack and a receiver. And then up front there is the fuel tank. So this one here, like I said, I haven't run it in a couple of years. Last time I ran it, it ran really well. And uh, the, probably the first time it flew in 10 years was two years ago. And I haven't had a chance since to get on the ice. Feels a little, oh, it doesn't feel too, too bad. So let's go through it real quick and uh, make sure it's ready. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to check because of the age of it. I am going to check the uh, the horns. So this is the horn for the rudder. Making sure that our clevises are nice and tight because you don't want that popping off mid-flight. Also, for the ailerons, uh, pardon me, for the actual elevators, there's also another horn there. It's plastic appears to be in good shape. And we're gonna make sure that our control surfaces move freely. So I am going to manually move them up and down. So that's manual with the servo. Feels nice and smooth. And we'll do the same with the rudder. The rudder also feels nice and smooth. And then we also have a throttle, this one over here, this one right here is the throttle. Now, a couple years ago I had issues with the throttle, but as you can see inside of the carburetor, it opens and closes inside there. So everything appears to check out here. This is some really old stuff. Like I said, technology is 10, 15 years old. When we bought it and uh, you can tell I still have 9.9 .9 volts hasn't been plugged in for about a year and a half which is really good uh, these are FM channels um, nowadays I believe they're all 2.4 gigahertz which means that you can fly as many planes as you want you don't have to worry about channels or interference so we're gonna throw the switch on plane and we are gonna test our control surfaces so here we have, this should be our rudder, which it is. We have our elevator, which appears to be working fine. And then we also have our throttle. And that is working fine as well. So now we're going to check the wing. Do the same thing with the wing, guys. I'm going to check that out, make sure all the clevises are nice and tight. And then we're going to plug it in. All right, so this is how we charge them. It's plugged in here. And if we look at the transmitter, it's part of me, not the transmitter, the charger. 
We have our two lights on, and then our receiver plugs in via this little connector right here, sits down inside, and uh, that's going to be charged up for the night, and we will definitely test those batteries in the morning. I'm just going to check everything else. We have small things like, like this is loose, so a piece of tape will fix that. This one as well. It's glue gunned. Everything, everything appears to be okay, other than uh, I did notice that the throttle cable right here is broken off. Broke off of that piece of wood. So I am going to have to figure out a way to get this reattached to there, just glued nice and tight because you don't want this binding and not being able to pull it back down to idle. That would be bad. Coming in hot. So these model aircraft are identical uh, to the full size aircraft uh, in terms of uh, physics and the way they operate with the control surfaces. So I was a member of a club many, many years ago, uh, a couple of clubs. I was a flight instructor at uh, our local club in Garson for a couple of years. I picked up the hobby really quick. And uh, by the first year I was already instructing other people. So it is a hobby where, I mean, disaster can strike. So you've got to remember something this size probably weighs seven, eight pounds. And if that's coming in and strikes somebody, you know, if I hit somebody doing 60 miles an hour, there's death. That's why people who fly from cl clubs have to carry what's called MAAC insurance. And that insurance uh, gives you, I think it's a $1 million. It was a $1 million liability when I was a member of one of the clubs uh, in case of accident or death or dismemberment. So these nitro powered uh, planes are not toys. They are for people who have been trained and or are working with an instructor. So don't think you're going to grab uh, a nitro plane like this and throw it into the air. It is a hundred percent guaranteed that your first flight, you will crash it. That is 100%. That's why you have instructors at these clubs. So support your local club. Nowadays, everything is electric. They're a lot smaller, a lot less dangerous. Some of them are just as dangerous, but a lot smaller, probably easier to learn on, and uh, maybe something you could fly in your own backyard uh, without any instruction, because if it hits the ground, it's uh, not going to obliterate into a thousand pieces like these things do. So uh, anyway, let me show you that glow plug. So these are really cool. These engines uh, are two-stroke, like I mentioned. So it pulls in the fuel and exhausts at the same time, and then it compresses and ignites. So this is the glow plug that goes into the top of the engine. It's uh, similar to a diesel. It uh, needs to glow red to get the engine started, and that's what the glow drivers are actually for. So the glow drivers pull in, hook onto the back of it, and if you look real close here, Let's see if we can get this one to glow red. Well, one of two things is happening right now. Either my glow driver is dead, which is more than likely the case, or the glow plug is dead. But I think it's the glow driver. Let's try something else. So a couple of things we need to make sure happens for tomorrow is that uh, the box is ready. And this is the flight box. You may have seen it in almost all of my videos and wondered what the heck is this thing? This is the flight box to get the plane ready when you're out at the field. I built this many, many years ago. Here's my fuel. This is my glow plug igniter. I have my electric fuel pump right here, as well as my charger for my glow plug igniter. Spare props, I have some tools, an old timer that we had, some tape. Uh, this is my voltage tester, and it also puts a small load on the battery packs. And on this side here, this is the uh, flight panel. So this is where you could uh, plug in your starter. Um, what else could you do with this guy? Hang on, gimbal life, gimbal life. There we go. Now you could plug in your starter. Uh, we have our glow power on and off for the manual glow driver. 
this is the manual glow driver right here uh, in there somewhere that's the starter by the way we have our power on and off and uh, we also have what else we have yeah right here glow plug and this gives us the level of the glow plug let me show you guys a glow plug it's pretty cool I'm going to start by turning the power on on the box and that lights up. So now that actuates uh, my fuel pump. So the fuel pump has in and has out. So we're not going to do any of that right now because we're going to make a mess. Uh, we also have our glow plug on and off and that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. Right after I show you the starter. So let me just get the starter plugged in here for you. And this is our starter. And you can start the plane both with your fingers and or with the starter and or with what's called the chicken stick. So this is the starter right here and you can see it spins at a very high rate of speed. And you ram that into the prop and uh, turns the prop. Now I'll show you the glow plug controller. Uh, since my glow plug, my remote glow plug is dead, we're going to need to use the manual one which I don't like using on the plane because of the wires and you'll see why tomorrow when I show you so now we have the plug controller I'll shut that off we're going to sit the glow plug inside of the clip because this sits in the engine and you what you do is you clip this onto the engine like so and then when I flip it on you will see nothing nothing at all I wonder if this this glow plug must be bad because my remote controller is not working and this one is not working all right let's try another glow plug all right i found another glow plug so let's plug this guy back in like so I'll put that in the clip so all right let's see if this works oh look at that so that is your glow plug it glows red hot and ignites that fuel it's actually hard to stare at all right that sucker's gonna be hot now so um, once the engine is started you can remove the glow plug clip and just the heat from the compression keeps the engine running just like a regular diesel so it's diesel like but not diesel, if that makes any sense. So there's the glow plug I was just showing you guys. And this is the cylinder head. So the engine is sitting sideways. Now to fuel these guys, we need to grab ourselves one of these fuel lines. Usually the one that feeds the carburetor right up here. Uh, oh no, this one's got an external fueler. I forgot about that. Let's try that. So this one just so happens to have uh, an external fuel lock. And that should just push in like so. And then we disconnect our exhaust line. And then we make sure that our bottle is ready to go. All right, I just gave the fuel a good little shake. And I'll let you guys back here watch the fuel tank. And the fuel tank is this thing right here. And the fuel I'm going to be putting in there is green. Let's keep our eye out for that. All right, no leaks. So far, so good. And I'm not going to fill it to the top so that it overflows out of the exhaust port, but I am going to fill it almost to the top. There we go, we're almost there now. It's coming up. There we are. That's a pretty full tank right there. So we're gonna shut that off. We're gonna disconnect our fuel filler. Damn, those things are tight. I'm going to reverse the pump, drain the line, 
now we are ready to go. So we are full of fuel, ready for tomorrow. As you can see right there, that green liquid, and there's the fuel. So that is good. And we can't forget to reconnect our exhaust pressure line because this is how the engine is fed its fuel. There is no fuel pump on the engine, so all that we can rely on is exhaust gases pressurizing the fuel tank, which in turn pushes the fuel up to the carburetor. Cool, eh? So I told you guys I would look after I would look after these windows and we're going to do that with packing tape. This is how this plane gets all of its holes repaired with packing tape. There we go. That's not going anywhere, I don't think now. Is it pretty? No. Do I care? No. No, this is a just a fun flyer. So I'm not too concerned about it. All right. So our windows are repaired. Now, one thing I do want to do is I do want to get a camera on this thing for tomorrow. So it's either going to have an epic flight with some beautiful video or we're going to catch the crash. You know, one, one of the two. Either one's going to be amazing. So this is the camera that I would like to mount to the bottom of the plane. This is its housing. I'm going to put it in this housing. I have another housing, but uh, I think this one would protect it from uh, fuel spill or fuel runoff of the exhaust. And I have a whole pack of adapters. Just not sure which one I'm going to use. I have stick on pads. I don't know if that'll stick. So if I stick this, what holds it to the bottom? I don't know. Here's what we came up with. I think that's gonna work perfectly. And uh, I mounted it with one of the sticky pads and as added security, I put a screw in it and I did not pierce the fuel tank. Lucky enough. So what's going to end up happening now is when I am at level flight, it should be tipped down like so. And it's far enough away from the exhaust right there that it will not get full of oil because these are messy. So if you look here, there's some oil residue left over, and that's the oil that's in the fuel to lubricate the engine. So, I think we are ready for tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what tomorrow brings. So, I'm ready to throw the wings back on, check all the control surfaces. I'm going to leave it charging overnight and uh, hope for the best in the morning. morning it's early got up early while there's no wind and uh, everything checked out so let's show you what I got done all right so I got the wing on checked all the control surfaces everything appears to be working well and uh, got my camera installed with my TF card did my battery check everything's good uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I am going to run it in the garage now so that I'm not stuck uh, down below trying to start it for an hour if it doesn't want to start and uh, don't want to be out there. It's, it's not super cold out, but why freeze your hands if you don't have to? Well, we're going to start by uh, priming the engine and to do that we, uh, we're going to be holding our finger over the top of the carburetor and flipping the prop. Until we get fuel that comes out. That's a good sign right there. And if you notice, I don't know if you can tell, I strapped down the back of the, uh, I 
strap down the tail so it doesn't take off on me. So I got my glow plug igniter on. It's on the far side over there. So before I light the glow plug igniter, I'm just going to give the props a few turns. What is going on? This is why we check things in the morning for prior to flight time. Again, the igniter's not on. That's why you always play with it on the ground because you never know what's going to happen in the air. So let's get it started back up. Anybody who has flown nitro or fuel powered airplanes, that smell, it's intoxicating. All right, we made it down. Here we are, all set up. Beautiful morning. So I've gone and set myself up on this little thing of snow because you can't even step on that. It is so slippery. I don't know how well. This is going to glide or land. I tried to pick the smoothest spot of the whole lake, so we're going to see what's going to go. So I'm out here, it's slippery, so I got my ice grippers. Thank you, Father Law. So the only problem I could see having would be, this would be my landing strip, is I'll be probably coming into the sun, doing my final into the sun, which is a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna try and maybe get it over on this side. And I don't have, well, I have lots of landing strip, but it's pretty rough. So I gotta make sure that I'm gonna to touch down somewhere over there and kind of coast all the way over there. And hopefully I don't hit any of these little 
bumps there because it could be disastrous. So to get my remote igniter going here. Nope. I'll do it in a second. Alright, we're live.
did it. Plane's back in one piece. I took it down and I didn't have a whole lot of fuel left. Usually they'll run about 10 minutes or so, 10-15 minutes. Um, my problem on this time, uh, this time for not having a second flight, is that the, uh, the batteries, uh, I don't trust them. The batteries are over 10 years old. Why so push it? Rebel One lives another day. So here we are, back in there, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. The sky is blue. So hope everybody enjoys their day. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, maybe something else might be coming up on this channel, remote control related. I don't know. Don't want to want to give it away or anything, but maybe floats. Maybe. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day.